What is happening, people? Welcome to Coffee Break with Dunna. Here we are. We got Mr. Camera Junkie, first one in the door already. Sunil's here. Louis or Louis is here. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. And welcome again to another edition of Coffee Break with Dunna Did It. We're going to hang out. We're going to have some coffee. I'm going to answer some of your guys' questions. I hope you guys came ready with your questions uh, because this week was a big week. This week was a very big week in the uh, in the world of Sony cameras. We had to, <laughs> and especially in in YouTube land here, um, because oh my gosh, this this uh, Tuesday I guess it was when everybody released their videos all at the same time. Yeah, it was it was overwhelming. It was awesome, but it was uh, it was overwhelming for sure. We got Jake Sloan in the house. We got EAU Media Productions. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Mr. Camera Junkie. <laughs> Jake Sloan says, "Rumor has it Sony released a new camera." That's the rumor. That's what I hear anyway. I had I have a couple of sources. <laughs> uh, what is happening? Somebody says, sup. I'm not going to try and pronounce that because I'm just going to do a terrible job of it. But thanks for coming. We're letting the people trickle in right now. If you guys do have questions about the Sony ZV-1, this guy here, you can uh, you can start to formulate them now. Maybe what I'll do to start with is, uh, is just start talking about this thing. And uh, if you haven't seen the, the videos that have come out and stuff, Maybe I'll go through some of the some of the kind of basics and stuff once we give uh, give everybody a, a minute to come in. We have a sip of coffee. Does everyone have their coffee ready? Everyone ready for this? Yeah. Hey. Sunil says, "Did you know that the Sony ZV-1 screen can't be seen with polarizing sunglasses?" I did see that on a couple of reviews. I don't wear polarizing sunglasses, so I didn't. Uh, I didn't run into that uh, problem when I was doing my review, but you know, it is what it is. You can get around it. You can buy screen protectors that uh, that fight against that, but uh, yeah. We got Steve Stuff in here. Greetings from Vienna, Austria. It's 2.03 a.m. Well, thanks for being a trooper and making it. Jay Lippman's in the house. Some of the regular crew is here for the live stream. We got some new people too. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we've got kind of a new angle for today. I managed to get the camera lower, so I'm not like looking up at it the whole time. And also I'm not looking below it the whole time when I'm staring at my computer screen, trying to figure out what you guys are saying. And Mr. Camera Junkie says it looks like a treasure troll. It does kind of look like the, the old troll dolls or whatever, hey? Let's see. Here's your look at the uh, at the camera itself. There you go. Kippy's channel says Quippy Kippy. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. It says uh, I think the product highlight focus mode has to be the most uh, Im that impressed you the most. Yeah, no doubt. That's uh, that's definitely definitely a cool one. All right, maybe like I said, I'll maybe I'll go through some of the some of the kind of features. What makes this a little bit special? Um, so as you can see, it's a, it's a compact camera. It's a, it's a point and shoot. Um, if you haven't seen the videos, that's basically what it's all about. It's about vlogging. They, they made it, it's called, they called it like a, a content creator and vlogger camera. Let me see if I can. So right here, content creation made simple. All right, there you go content creators and vloggers. So they had a very, very specific niche for this camera. And then along with it, they, uh, they released the vlogger kit. And notice how I have to hide my face <laughs> to make it, to make my a6600 focus on that. So, and the vlogger kit comes with the, uh, the handle and uh, uh, memory card. A pretty sick memory card too. Um, so yeah, the uh, the ZV-1. It's uh, a one-inch sensor camera, so it's it's got the same sensor as the most recent RX100 
Uh, I guess Mark 7 would be the one, but it's got the same lens as the RX100 Mark 5, so it's a 24 to 70 full frame equivalent lens. Um, the picture is great. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, my my Insta360 One R video was entirely shot, uh, except for the part where I was testing the Insta360. Um, the the rest of the video was entirely shot on this camera, and I think it did a great job. It's it's definitely got less dynamic range than uh, your APS-C cameras and that kind of stuff, but. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, I think it did a great job. I think that the the picture quality coming out of this thing, uh, especially if you just need something that is easy to use and just works, it's fantastic. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's got great quality. Obviously, it's got the flip screen that everybody's been asking for forever. The side swivel. It also closes on the back. Let me see if I can get that. There you go. So that you're, uh, so that you're not, you're protecting the screen. And when you open it, oh, like you can see the comments. Um, so when you close it, it uh, it turns off. When you open it, it turns on. But that only happens if you close it that way with the with the protective on the outside kind of thing, because you can't use it without uh, without some kind of a screen, because there's no EVF on this thing. Scully's House of Thrillers says done a fire. Hello. I assume that you enjoy my content. Cheers to that. Nicholas Navarro says, first time seeing you live. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. We have a lot of fun here. We drink too much coffee and we hang out, you know? So um, let me just, uh, I'm going to scroll up here. You guys are, you guys are making the chat happen right now. So I'm going to try and catch up a little bit. Uh, uh, Sunil says, uh, I wonder if Sony will release a firmware update for the a7 III that includes the feature the ZV-1 has. I doubt it. It doesn't seem like Sony's style, to be completely honest. Uh, it doesn't seem like something they do, and there are rumors that there are some more announcements coming in June. I don't know anything about these rumors yet, but uh, fingers crossed, maybe we'll see an a7 IV. Uh, that would be really cool. Allstate Pest Control says, hey, hey, from Australia, welcome. It must be like tomorrow there. You guys live in the future. Uh, Jay Lipman says, the ZV-1 does look sick. It's definitely, I like it. I'm going to buy one. I'm definitely going to, I've got one in the cart right now. I just got to, you know, wait for the right time. Uh, we got a question here that says, is it comfortable to carry in your jean pocket? I'm really interested in finding a new compact camera. Also, hello from Ossining, New York. Cool. Um, comfortable to throw in the jean pocket. I don't know. I guess it depends on how tight your jeans are. Uh, if you wear jeans like I do, I probably wouldn't. I threw it in my hoodie pocket today and it was like, it was fine. It's a little bit heavy. Like it's a little bit heavier than a phone and it's definitely thicker than a phone. So like, here's a, a comparison here if I can block my face. So that's my iPhone uh, XR, 10R, and there's the, the camera there. So it's, it's definitely thicker. Um, and it's it's heavier, not by a whole lot. I've got a case on my on my phone, but it's not a whole lot heavier than like an iPhone with a case on it kind of thing. So if you wear tight jeans, no. If you've got the baggies going on, I think you'll be all right. Yeah, and it does definitely fit in a in a jeans pocket, but I don't know if you like to fill up your pockets too much. <laughs> what else do we got in here? Mr. Camera Junkie says, that's what I thought as soon as I saw it. It's a treasure troll camera. Yeah. P.S. The new Trolls movie was awesome. I'm a huge Justin Timberlake fan, so. Uh, Shadowhawk says, do you think that 24 millimeters is wide enough for vlogging or would you have preferred a more wider lens? Okay, here's the thing about that. That seems to be the biggest comment uh, besides like, should I get this or should I get an A6400? Besides like, what camera should I buy comments? The biggest one is people being not stoked about the 24 millimeter on the wide end. And I think there's, there's a reason for that. I think that they had a lot of they had a lot of requests for shallow depth of field on a vlogging camera. 
And I think that to get the F 1.8 that you get at 20, 24 millimeters, um, that, that was as wide as they could go and keep it F 1.8 uh, without, you know, as, as you start to make the aperture bigger and make the lens wider, you have to have a bigger space to do it in and it's probably more expensive and and all that kind of stuff to manufacture so if they did something like a a 16 to 35 i don't think that they would have got it or an 18 to 35 or whatever i don't think they would have got it down to f 1.8 and so i think that's that's where it uh they kind of had to make a decision it's like do we go wider or we do or do we give the people their shallow depth of field so personally, I have long, long monkey arms. So uh, vlogging at 24 millimeters for me, I don't really mind it. I get like a nice like head and shoulders kind of shot. I, d I don't need it to be uber, uber wide, excuse me. Um, I mean like this, for example, like th what you guys are seeing now is a 24 millimeter equivalent. And if I had this on a selfie stick, like I could hold it out at that at that uh, distance or on a gorilla pod or whatever. So, you know, that's that's kind of what you'd be seeing if I was vlogging with this camera. But again, like I'm 6'1 and I got big arms, so, um, or long arms, I should say. So yeah, that's, that's kind of a concern that I know a lot of people have had. Um, I, it doesn't bug me. I also come from vlogging with APS-C size cameras and the, the widest that I've ever had is a 16 millimeter, which is 24 millimeter equivalent. So it's what I'm used to anyway. I, I never bought the, the 10 to 18 F4 that everybody has for vlogging on the Sony APS-C models. So um, I'm not used to that super wide shot like a lot of people seem to, they have to have kind of thing. Um, so it doesn't bug me. I would I would much rather have the have the f 1.8 than a wider lens um, What else do we got where the the chat starting to move pretty quick if you guys are just joining us Welcome to coffee break with Donna did it uh, today. We're talking about the new Sony ZV-1 This little guy here with its cute little hair you can give it like a little little style um and uh and answering your questions if uh if there's anything that you feel like you still don't know from the 900 videos that were released on tuesday now's the time to ask and i have it right here still i haven't sent it back yet so i can uh i can try things if you guys want me to i can't show you the show you the the results of anything that i try here but uh um, and if you guys are just joining us make sure to give this a thumbs up so that it tells youtube to invite more friends uh, and everyone be nice and if you want to drop me some super chat uh, Coffee money, that's awesome. No need, but if you want to that's great And also if you have an important question that absolutely needs to get answered right at this very moment uh, That's a good way to get my attention too, and I take bribes uh, Let me see if there's any more questions in here uh, We got black magic pocket cinema camera 4k versus Sony a7 III for Cin uh, video cinematographique. I assume that means like cinematic video. Uh, both of them. They'll they'll both do the trick. Yeah, I don't know. I like autofocus, so a7 III for me. But um, Adventures of Luca says, would you rather have the ZV-1 or the Canon M50? I would I would probably prefer the ZV-1 for like for vlogging and like. Uh, quick small form factor that kind of stuff I would probably rather have the ZV-1 um, if I was like shooting my main shots or doing client work or that kind of stuff and I had to pick between those two then I might go M50 just for the the larger sensor but that's tough because I am not a fan of Canon's APS-C mirrorless stuff that they've done uh, what else do we got Hey from Calgary, Mirabelle. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Right in my uh, right in my backyard there. Lydia Gray says hi. I used to watch your videos. Happy to catch you live. Thanks for coming, Lydia. I appreciate you swinging out. Britt Byler says, "How's your mental health going?" It's good right now. It's uh, you know I think this this period has been difficult for everybody, and it's been on and off trying to figure out what's 
what's going on, but uh, I've had lots to do. I've been busy, so I've been reviewing cameras and doing work and all that kind of stuff. So thank you for asking. I appreciate that. <laughs> all right, what else do we got in here? Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Scully says, Donna, that set looks so dope. Thank you. This is my office. This is where I film my videos and stuff. Uh, we just moved into this place, so it might be time for a... Uh, I think I pretty much have it set up now, so it might be time for a, a office tour. All right. Jay Lipman says, just treated myself to a Samsung Galaxy Tab S6. Might have to hold off on the camera for now. I just I just ordered a, an iPad Pro the other day. So it's coming like next week, I think. I'm very excited. I already have the Apple Pencil, but it doesn't do me any good yet because uh, I don't have an iPad to use it with. Uh, what do we got here? Scully says, Dunny, do you like the Blue Yeti? We're getting off topic here, but uh, the Blue Yeti's great. I don't have one personally, but I've heard other people using it, and it sounds good. So, and I think it's easy to use because it's a USB mic, right? Um, and Blue makes great stuff, so. Okay, trying to find some more questions in here. Scully says, I need a wide lens. Yeah, some people just, it's that's a deal breaker for a lot of people, but. Not for me, personally. Um, Jake Sloan says, how's the weather ceiling? I, I can't confirm this, but I'm pretty sure I heard somebody say that there's basically none. Uh, and part of that has to do with the uh, the grill for the new, um, the new microphones or something like that. Like, they, they basically couldn't weather seal it. But I don't know, like... That wasn't something that in any of the uh, literature was really mentioned or anything. So um, something to further test. Unfortunately, it's not mine, so I'm probably not gonna like spray it with water or test that out too much because I don't want to send it back to Sony broken. <laughs> uh, Jay Lipman says, I have hobbit arms, I need a wide angle. There you go. It's, uh, not everybody has, has the monkey arms, you know? Uh, Mr. Camera Junkie says, do you think that if Sony releases the a7 IV with 4K 120 frames per second and excellent low light capability, you would really need an a7S upgrade? I think if they release an a7 IV, they're not going to release an a7S upgrade. Like the a7 III is already so good that if, when they do come out with an a7 IV, it's going to have to also be so good. So I don't know. I, I really don't know where they're going to go with that. Like the a7 III is already such a video beast um, and it's great in low light. It's like the, the a7 III, I've seen comparisons between the a7 III and the a7S II and like it it holds its own against in low light and stuff. And that was really the, the huge advantage that the A7S had over the A7 series originally. So yeah, I I don't know what they're gonna do with that. I, I would be happy with either. I think personally for me, I'd rather have an A7 IV than an A7S because I'm a hybrid shooter. So I want a camera that can do great stills and video kind of thing. And the A7S series is a little more video centric. Um, what else do we got in here? Motion says, uh, Motion says, uh, can you do a drop test? No, thank you. Again, I don't want to, I don't want to send, uh, Sony back a broken camera, ideally, so. Um, <laughs> Scully's just full of the, full of the compliments here. Thank you. Uh, ding, ding, ding. Somebody's just, uh. <laughs> Some people are just ripping on Sony in here. What else do we got? Greg wants to know, how does the 960 frames per second work? When you say, how, how does it work? Do you mean like physically what's the process of it? Or do you want to know what like the quality of it is? So um, Adventures of Luca says, uh, is the ZV-1 better for vlogs or photography? definitely better for vlogs. If you are a primarily photographer, I do not suggest this camera. 
it it's okay like if if you're willing to like fully just like point and shoot but i think there are other options out there that are fine for that um but if you're like a photographer and you uh and you want to like manual focus or anything like that it's it's really not designed for that and i think like lots of photographers like to use the evf and this one doesn't have one like it's it's not photography based it does take photos and they look fine like they look as good as the rx100 or whatever um but yeah i would i wouldn't suggest it as like a primarily photography camera so um yeah uh, there we go got some caffeine in me um doo, doo, doo. <laughs> killer skin canoe says the a7 mark IV better have a flippy screen i really hope so too i don't know how they're gonna do it on the how they're gonna they might have to change the body a little bit to to get it on their full frame cameras i'm getting behind in the chat you guys let me just i'm doing a quick scroll quick scroll quick scroll Broadish question, nothing to do with the new camera, but how did you end up working with both video, photo, and music? Basically combine both of my passions into a career. Uh, I am a musician and music producer is kind of my main thing. I own a recording studio and run that. That's my full-time job. Uh, photography and videography became kind of my uh, creative outlet outside of work. And then it turned into this. So that's, that's where we're at. Um, someone said there's an ND filter kit for this. There is. Actually, I didn't know that at first, but there is a kit that attaches, that uh, that Sony sells, that attaches to the outside of the lens itself. Uh, I don't know exactly how it attaches, but it is a filter kit. It's a 49 millimeter filter kit that you can attach your own filters to. Um, so that's kind of cool, because I didn't think they would have that at first. Um, so yeah, anyway. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, is the touchscreen on the VZ1 any better than, say, the other Sony cameras? No, it's exactly the same. As far as I can tell at this point, it's basically the same. You can use touch to focus. Uh, you can swipe when you're, like, zoomed in for manual focus uh, assist or whatever, but uh, that's about it. No, no menus or anything like that. Scully says, congrats on your silver play button. Thank you. I don't have the, the play button yet, but I have hit the, the 100K last week. Um, and yes, Sunil is correct. It does also have, this camera does also have a built-in three-stop ND filter, which is super awesome, super handy. Rachel Simmons is here. Welcome, Rachel. Thanks for swinging by. Dun, dun, dun. Is it worth switching from Hero 8 to ZV-1? I would say that those are probably two different kind of use cases uh, between the uh, um, the action cam and, and this, but personally, I would go with this, but I'm not much of an action camera guy, uh, and this is still nice and, nice and compact, and it's got a much, in my opinion, better, uh, uh, better quality look to it. Um, Butch Bowman says, do I think the new A7 model will have a flippy screen? I hope so, but I don't know. People have been saying it long enough. The thing that you have to realize is that they start developing these cameras a long time before they're released, right? So like if people are complaining about a flippy screen or whatever, it's like that'll be maybe two models later because they have to start developing it. Like there's a, a big lag. It's, it's kind of the same thing like with movies and stuff is like what you don't realize is that they shot that movie two years ago and it took a long time to get there so all the cameras that we're seeing come out now uh, have been in development for a long time like they don't just whip it up and put it out the next week kind of thing so uh kicking it with my kicking it with timmy b says office tour i can't i can't pull the camera out of here right now but maybe i'll make a video that's uh, an office tour at some point um what else do we got here sunil says you can use the ipad pro as a second display for your computer i think yeah i think uh i forget what it's called sidecar or something like that i'm excited to try that out uh dun, dun. Mm -hmm -hmm. 
I'm getting way behind in the chat. Thank you guys so much for coming out. If you're just joining us, make sure to give this a thumbs up uh, so that YouTube goes and invites some more people. We're, uh, we're hanging out. We got like 37 in the chat right now. If you haven't said hey, make sure to, uh, to say hey. Sled Boss says, this background music is super annoying. Thanks, Sled Boss. <laughs> I feel like you've been at all of my live streams so far, and I always play the same thing. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's annoying. Um, Shadowhawk says, would you bring the ZV-1 to a concert? I think that's a great use for it, especially like if they're not letting people in with bigger cameras and stuff. They, they might let you in with a little point and shoot like this. Uh, Greg says, how does Sony choose and reach out to creators to send new products and what, uh, and at what point were you not surprised to be contacted by a big brand? I'm still surprised to be completely honest when, when Sony reaches out to me. I think I'm ever since Sony camera camp, I'm kind of on maybe their, their short list for stuff like this now, but, uh, I don't know. It still, it still blows my mind. Um, and I don't know, I don't know how the choices were made. I think with Sony Camera Camp, uh, it had to do with uh, I, Justine, and Jenna picking people. I think, anyway, I I, I don't know. It, it could have maybe not been that, but uh, I think they had some kind of a hand in it and, and just did some research on who, uh, who's been repping Sony and stuff. There were a lot of like non-Sony creators there too, but so I don't, I don't know exactly what the, uh, um, what the process is, but I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that I'm invited to to participate in that kind of stuff now, and then I can pass all this information on to you guys. Uh, keeping this tech says, "Hey Dunna, aside from the multifunction ring and the EVF, are the photography features of the ZV1 one, uh, one for one with the RX100 Mark 7 uh, well, the lens is different, so that's that's going to be a factor because the the Mark Seven I think has the like 24 to 200 or something like that, um, but it's not as wide an aperture, I believe. Uh, I think I'm right on that. They're, they they had a bunch, the Mark Six and Mark Seven, they all had different lenses, and I can't remember which one's which. But uh, um, other than that, it's like the the manual focus is is the kind of the big one that you lose, and the EVF. Uh, I'm trying to think if anything else would be different. Uh, you've got no uh, mode dial, so you got a mode button instead. Um, but quality-wise, it's going to be the same. And like, I don't know, you point, you point and shoot. They're both like point and shoot cameras, so you have that option. Um, but uh, yeah, I think like the RX100, as far as photography goes, is much better for people who want more manual control whereas this one like if you're just walking around and you're just like happy to point and shoot <laughs> i keep saying point and shoot because it's a point and shoot camera but yeah like if you're happy just like letting autofocus do the work and throw it in an auto mode and go like it's it's fine you know i i couldn't do a lot of photography testing because uh the raw files aren't supported yet in lightroom so i I did do a bunch and like had to convert it in Sony software, but I didn't I didn't get too heavy into the photography thing. It is really like designed as a vlogger kind of camera. So that's a great question though. And I think there'll be a lot of that, like people, because Sony is known for doing that, you know, the uh, um, hybrid cameras like that are really like they're kind of photography based with a whole bunch of video stuff in there and this is really the other other way around so um kai w already did a drop test i gotta check out his video that's one of the ones i haven't seen yet uh nicholas ho says what are your thoughts on the 24 mil millimeter limit zoom on the zv1 for vloggers i i kind of answered this already for me i don't mind it like i don't mind 24 millimeters i think it might have to do with my long arms or something like that, but uh, uh, it seems to be a, a deal breaker for a lot of people. They're not interested because it didn't go wide enough. I have my my thoughts on why they went that way, but uh, it is what it is. Is what it is. All right, what else do we got? We got a super chat from Jay. It says, the music from this stream is constantly stuck in my head. At this point, I feel like I need to pay you for using it. 
Thanks, Jay. I appreciate it. This is, uh, if you guys don't know, the, all the beats that you're hearing behind is all stuff that I made. Um, and I'm planning on, I'm trying to plan on figuring out how to release it for YouTubers to use in their in their videos, but I'm just working out logistics and that kind of stuff. I got some big stuff coming that uh, that gets you guys involved. You're gonna wanna keep an eye on the channel in the next couple of weeks here, cause it's, it's, you guys are, I can't even, there are no words, but I'm excited. I'm excited for you guys. Um, so make sure to subscribe if you're not already. If you're just joining us and you wanna, you wanna get in on some of the, the action that's coming up, now's the time. Um, just gonna move some things around here so that I can maybe prop this guy up where you guys can see it. Just barely. You can just barely see it in the in the frame there with its cute little hat. Uh, what else do we got in the chat here? Uh, out of ten, how would you rate this camera? That's a tough one, like, because uh, there would have to be like categories to rate it out of. But for what it's designed for, like for vlogging and and content creation for YouTubers, for being like a reasonably priced uh, camera, I I would give it an eight out of ten. Like I think they did a really good job with what this is designed for. You know, it's it's not a do it all kind of camera, but it is it is pretty fantastic. Um, do, Mr. Camera Junkie says, that's my point. I think that the a7 IV uh, would render any a7S series obsolete. I agree. I think that if when they do the a7 IV, there might not be a need for the a7S unless they got something really crazy uh, up their sleeve. Uh, 960 frames per second. Okay, we're going back to that. Okay, so first of all, the 960 frames per second is 1080. It's it's full 1920 by 1080. There is a crop on it, and it does get a little bit softer. Uh, part of the problem there is that when you're shooting at 960, the minimum shutter speed is a thousand, one one thousandth of a second. And ideally, you want to if you want to do the 180 degree shutter rule or whatever, you want to double that. Um, so then you're cranking up your ISO to make up, unless you're like outside and you've got like a ton of light and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's part of the problem is that you're, you're getting a lot more noise because you're, you're get, bringing in a lot less light. Um, I did a test in my video. I should really drop a, a link to my video in the description of this video. Um, but uh, so I did a test in my video where I showed kind of the same shot at 240, uh, 480 and 960 um, and there's like I said there's a crop going on but also there's uh, you know it, it still looks pretty cool and and I what I did is I dropped a bunch of coffee beans in front of the uh, in front of the camera and and did it all in like super duper slow motion and I thought it looked pretty cool but uh, okay I'm dropping a link in the description here <laughs> So if anyone wants to hop out for a minute, or if they wanna, uh, if they wanna go watch the video, there. <laughs> um, but there is a spot in that, probably two thirds of the way through the video, where you can see the quality of it, um, and it was just like completely naturally lit. I just had a big window behind me. I didn't bother uh, to do any uh, any artificial light or anything like that. So. Um, Chasing Chase says, how much should I be crying since I finally bought the RX100 Mark 7? I wouldn't be. They're, they're kind of a different beast. Like the RX100 Mark 7 is, is a great camera in its own right. Um, and it's got lots of great features and that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, they're just kind of different. Um, John Zimmerman says, we finally got a flip screen from Sony. Do you think we'll finally get a touch flip screen in the new A7 series? And that's this seems to be the question of the night um i mean first of all it's already a touch screen it's just not touch in the menus uh which i feel both ways about like it would be nice to have that but it's like not really a deal breaker for me um i call it the half-ass touch screen um so it is what it is but hopefully hopefully we get the flip screen in the a7 series um 
Helen wants to know, is the camera good for time-lapse? It does have time-lapsing function, just like all the new Sony cameras. There's something in there now. There's a, there's a mode in here that I haven't been able to figure out what it is. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can find it here. This, and it, it seems to have to do with like playing back uh, interval shot stuff. It, so it's called motion interval adjust. Adjust the interval of track in motion shot video. I haven't been able to figure out what that is. So uh, if you guys, if you guys know, let me know, because I'd love to be able to, you know, know this thing inside and out. Uh, what's the resolution of 960 frames per second? I answered that one already. 1920 by 1080. Um, is it necessary to invest in the A7R4 for video or the A7R3 does the job anyway? Uh, for video, I wouldn't suggest the A7R series. I'd go A7 III. Um, but if you already have the A7 III, it's, uh, it'll be great. You're doing, you're doing just fine. Dun, dun. All right. Scully says, I'm too green to be here. Most of this sounds like Chinese, but I want to learn. That's, you know, there's, there's this thing that if you just take it all in, and you just uh, you just absorb it all, even if you don't understand it now. When it comes up again later, and you do understand it, you'll remember what we said here, and it'll all start to make sense. It's uh, I forget what it's called. There's a name for that. And when you're kids, like you can you can take in all of this stuff. You're like this sponge, and even if you don't understand most of it, as you learn more, then the stuff that you learned before will uh, will take hold, kind of thing. Um. Uh, is it a good upgrade from the Canon M50? I wouldn't call it an upgrade necessarily. Uh, if you already have, uh, like an APS-C or a full frame camera, this camera wouldn't be an upgrade uh, necessarily, but it would be like a cool way to have like a quick on hand vlogging camera or content camera. Um, yeah. And actually, here's a, here's something that I didn't see in any of the other reviews that I, I watched and I didn't actually find out until today. This camera is the first camera in the Sony series that I've seen that if you shoot a video in portrait mode, it automatically rotates that video in portrait mode when you transfer it to your computer or your phone or wherever. All the other ones show up sideways and you have to rotate them in software. This one actually does uh, the rotation. It, it captures that information in the file, which personally, as much as it's like a weird little thing, I think that's kind of huge with all the vertical video that's happening nowadays and all the vertical content. Um, so, yeah. Um, Scully says, Donna, is this the new $500 camera? This is a new $800 camera. 800 uh, American is on for the first month. It's 749. Um, they have like an introductory price going on, and then after the first month, it'll go up to 799. Or if you're in Canada, it's 999, and there is no introductory price because uh, it's already cheaper in Canada if you take the conversion rate into uh, into account. Um, Killer Skin Canoe says, oh man, that's lame. Why can't they get their touch screens to be like smartphones in terms of responsiveness? I agree with that 100%. I feel like, I mean, Sony makes phones. Sony makes touch screen mobile phones. <laughs> so you'd think they'd be able to do it, but uh, something's holding them back. Uh, it might just be a price thing. Like they might, they might have to crank up the price of their cameras so much if they added that feature just because of parts or you know engineering or whatever or maybe the the processor in there they'd have to beef that up to be able to handle that so i it's got to be something like that um all right oh i'm almost caught up in the chat oh no i lied it just jumped <laughs> i was feeling so good for a second there all right if you guys are just joining us we got 45 in the chat right now welcome to coffee break with Dunna did it We've been rocking for, how long we've been going now? 40 minutes or so. Just rocking it. Um, and we're talking about 
the Sony ZV-1, new compact camera from Sony. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. A hundred people put out videos on it the other day, me included. And uh, if you guys have questions, make sure to make sure to let me know. Uh, if I'm not getting to your question for whatever reason, there is always the super chat option. Those are always appreciated, but not necessary if uh, if that doesn't work for you. And uh, yeah, let's see if we can find some more questions in here. I am way behind in the chat now. You guys are talking about stuff I was talking about 15 minutes ago. Hey, Donna, congrats on silver play button. Currently on the RX100 Mark IV. Is it worth upgrading to the ZV-1? I'd say from the Mark IV it might be. It might be worth it. Uh, okay, scrolling down, scrolling down. How would you rate the ZV-1 out of 10 and why? I answered that question. Eight. <laughs> uh, what else do we got? Is the background blur feature similar to iPhone's portrait mode? Uh, where it's kind of faking it. No, okay, so this is a common misconception with this. It's not software blur. What it's doing is it automatically adjusts the settings in the camera to make it f1.8. So when you turn that feature on, let me see if I can make it so you guys can see this here. Um, let's see, can we get this? Can we get it? There we go. Let's crank that up. There we go, okay, so here's the button here. So there's this mode, it's called defocus, right? And then there's clear. And what it does is it, it sets it between, so defocus is f1.8, and then clear is going to be uh, f5.6, I believe. Um, and those are the two, two different states. And then if you're done, when you're done with that, if I'm correct here, you have to cancel that mode by hitting the mode button. So when you're done with that, you hit mode and it'll go away and it'll go back to whatever settings you had it at before. Now, right now you didn't see it. You didn't see it keeping the exposure because I don't have it in auto modes. Um, but if you have it in some kind of auto mode, so you have to have uh, your shutter speed in an auto mode or ISO in an auto mode so that it can adjust and it does it does an insane job of not adjusting the exposure like keeping the exposure where it needs to be it's I was I was kind of blown away to be completely honest when when I got it and I, I tested that out um, it's you'd expect to see it like dip or or whatever but it does it does a great job um, but yeah, it's so it's not a software blur. It doesn't try and figure out where your subject is and, and give you that fake blur. This is a real shallow depth of field. Um, but it is limited in that in that case too. Like it'll only uh, it can only do what it can do with the settings. So uh, Mirabelle says, wait, what was the difference between the A7 and A7R series? So the A7R series R stands for resolution. Um, which basically is their like super high megapixel cameras. So the A7R 3 was like 45 megapixels or something. And then the A7R 4 is like 60 megapixels. Um, so they're designed for like high resolution photography. Adventures of Lucas says also congratulations on 100K subscribers. Thank you so much. Thanks for uh, being one of them and hanging out. Favorite picture profile. Personally, I'm a I'm an HLG guy right now. I do HLG blank and I crank up the saturation to 15. Uh, do, 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 do. Jay Lipman is speaking another language, I think, talking about Pythagorean theorem. Um, would you recommend this camera over a DSLR like Canon EOS 90D for vlogging? That's a tough one. Okay, so like if if image quality and like being able to choose lenses and stuff like that is your main priority, then go with like the DSLR, go with like a 90D or, or something like that or a, an A6600. Um, but if like being, uh, being able to toss it in your pocket and, and being quick and like you can leave it in auto mode and just like 
you just want it to be quick and easy, then definitely I suggest this. I think that's what I'm going to use it for. Like I'll, I'll still have my a7 III will be like my main uh, camera for in, in studio. My a6600 is super handy when I need it, um, you know, for, for some more kind of high quality vlogging and stuff. But like this will probably just stay with me all the time. Once I get mine, this one I have to send back to Sony, but um, once I actually get mine, it'll probably just like stay in my backpack all the time. And if I need something really quick, I can do it. It's, it's super nice for like doing Instagram stories and that kind of stuff. Uh, just a little bit. It takes a little bit more time than doing it with your phone, but you get it, uh, you get it a little bit better uh, quality. So, uh, would you say this camera is a competitor to Canon GS7X Mark III? Yes, this is like a a direct competitor to the G7X, I think, because they're almost the same price. Um, this one, I think, has basically blows the G7X out of the water for autofocus, which is like a huge thing. Like Sony is just killing it for autofocus right now. Uh, Canon's like, Canon's better, higher quality stuff does really well, but um, like all their dual pixel, but G7X I think loses dual pixel in 4K maybe? I could be wrong on that. Um, John Sandberg says, how are you getting your camera as your webcam? I'm using an Elgato Cam Link. I have a video on that called uh, my live stream setup or how I live stream, high quality live stream, something like that. If you check out my channel, I just, I did a video on it just a month ago or so. Um, and then I'm using something called Ecamm Live um, to do the stream itself and do all the like the graphics that you see. With the, where is it? There it is. Woo. Um, doo -doo -doo. Thoughts on the Tamron 70 to 180. Got mine a week ago. I haven't, I don't have it yet. I should probably look into it because I have the, uh, the 17 to 28 and 28 to 75. So, yeah. Um, what else do we got here? I think I actually caught up in the chat. This never happens. We got 48 people in here. If uh, if you guys are just joining us, make sure to give this video uh, a big like and uh, and that'll tell tell YouTube to tell everybody else to join us. If you guys got any more questions, let me know. Chat's slowing down a little bit. I have time for a time for a drink of coffee here. Sunil says, oh wow, Donna actually caught up with the chat. Yep. It's, uh, today is a miracle kind of day. So yeah, Sony ZV-1. I also really enjoy the, uh, the handle. Um, I, I didn't know whether I was gonna like it or not, but it is quite handy and it's, uh, it's cool because if when it's at the when it's at the right angle for like vlogging where it's kind of tilted towards you, if you kick out the the feet and leave it at that same angle, it ends up being like pretty much level, um, which is a really cool design the way that they've done it. So I don't know if I can show you guys like so if I have it like that, this part basically stays where it is, and now it'll sit flat on a table um, rather than like most of most of the kind of like tripod slash handle ones it's straight up and down and then they splay out into a kind of a more even tripod but the way that they've designed this is really really neat so that when you set it down after having vlogged with it it's already kind of on a on a level plane rich is here um, welcome dude what else do we got? Rachel Simmons says $1,500 ish camera for realtor videos and photos. Uh, that's got to be with the lens, doesn't it? Realtor videos and photos. I mean, I want to say Sony a6600, but uh, that's like 1400 for the body. So you're going to be without a lens there. There's something happening outside. <laughs> um, 
so yeah i i would say a6600 but then you're gonna you're gonna have to look at uh, lenses and stuff too so if that doesn't work then go for the a6400 um which is like uh 900 bucks i think and then you can look into a kit of a couple of lenses that'll that'll do for you um probably the 10 to 18 f4 would make sense for like realtor stuff um what else do we got does the zv1 beat out gopro's hero 8 attempt at the vlogger camera i think so i think it does a better job um sorry i'm pointing at my microphone but <laughs> there's I think this does a better job than like a GoPro. And part of that is the one inch sensor is, uh, is fantastic. I even like, I just reviewed the, uh, excuse me, the Insta 361 R one inch sensor and the image quality that was coming out of that was nowhere near what this one, uh, is. So yeah, I definitely suggest this one over any kind of action cam for vlogging. Um, what else do we got? Expedition Theme Park says, I kind of want that Bluetooth handle. The cool thing about the Bluetooth handle, you, first of all, you can buy it separately as well. I think it's like 150 bucks or something like that. Um, and it works with like, I, I used it with my a6600. I think it works with the a6400. Any of the cameras that have, um, that have Bluetooth in them, it'll work with. So you just gotta attach it or just uh, do the Bluetooth connection thing and yeah. Expedition theme park. You have like a little a little check mark beside you. You're like a verified verified account or something. I want to get verified. It seems fancy. Uh, do you think they'll start adding the product showcase modes into their new cameras? Is this something that could be added with a software update to existing cameras? I don't know. I really hope that they do add it. And Sony's pretty good about this. Like, for example, with this thing with the with the zv1 like they didn't have to give s log 2 s log 3 hlg all of those things like yeah like they didn't have to give us all that stuff but they did um they could have left that out and been like well this is a lower end camera you know and kind of pulled a, a cannon if you will and like crippled it a little bit um so that people still had a reason to buy the buy the other ones but uh yeah, I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't put it past them if they started putting that product showcase feature in newer cameras. But I mean, they might leave it for this one too as like a special thing. That's tough to know. It's it's a very specific and new feature. So, um, but yeah, like I said in in my in my video, I. Uh, uh, said like make sure to stick around because some of these features you might see in in future cameras and stuff too and they're supposed to supposed to have some more announcements and stuff according to the rumor sites so i hope i get another call to do some more reviews <laughs> um what else do we got e sunil said are you collabing with any youtubers soon like becky and chris etc i mean collabs are pretty limited right now um I want to, but you know, in-person collabs anyway. I mean, maybe maybe long-distance uh, virtual collabs might be kind of cool. I don't have any. I don't have any plans, but uh, a sixty six hundred has Bluetooth? Question mark. Yes, it does. Killer Skin Canoe says it costs thirty bucks. This vlogging handle? No, no, that can't be right. Give me one sec. I'm gonna look it up. We're gonna confirm this. We're gonna confirm, but I'm pretty sure it's like 150 bucks. Um, let's go to BH Photo. We're gonna confirm. My face just got a whole lot brighter. <laughs> Sony Bluetooth handle. Let's see if it pops up. What is it called? I need to find the model. Where are you here? Why isn't it on the thing? But yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm 98% sure that it's like 100 and 150 bucks. CV1, let's see if we can find it that way. So the ZV-1 with the vlogger accessory kit 
is an extra hundred dollars if you buy them together. And what does it come with? There it is. GP dash VP. I wish I, I should have shared my screen. That would have been smart. Too late now. <laughs> I'm not set up for that at this current moment. There it is. Shooting grip. $138 for this uh, specific grip. Uh, Expedition Theme Park says when you get to 100k you can apply for Verified. Ooh, I should apply. I just hit that. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, what do you think the image quality compared to APS-C camera? As long as your lighting is good, it's it looks great. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, I. I have no problem with it. It's it's not going to be as good in low light, and it doesn't have quite the same dynamic range. Um, I did notice, like when I was shooting outside, that the the whites got blown out a little bit quicker than maybe they would have on uh, on my APS-C things. Oh, <laughs> oh, Killer Skin Canoe said it's thirty bucks to verify my account, not for the handle. Jeez, I just did all that work. <laughs> Uh, and I can't see the chat while I was looking for the other stuff, so I just went off on a crazy tangent there. Um, Tian Tran says the student discount is six nineteen on B and H. Is this price a no brainer? Six nineteen for this camera? That's pretty good. Jeez. Yeah. If if that's for the um for the zv1 i'd say go for it what is the student discount on bnh that's crazy um vlogger accessory kit is a 199.99 in canada yeah you got it planet prince is in the building welcome welcome all right Donna caught up on the chat again. I think we're just gonna go for a couple more minutes. So if you guys have any, uh, if you guys have any more questions on the ZV1, anything else you want to know that you didn't learn from all the videos that came out the other day, let me know. Now's your chance. If you wanna, you know, ask any other questions too, you can just do whatever you want. <laughs> it's your chat. Can't believe I caught up on the chat. You guys are you guys are just aren't chatty tonight, I guess. Either that or I skipped a whole bunch somehow. <laughs> Rich says, yeah, who did Sony not send this thing to? Yeah. It was like it was cool to see the the people that got sent it to were a lot of them were the same people that were at Sony Camera Camp. So like they obviously like I think have a list of people that uh you know, are there their people? So, camera conspiracies didn't get one. Yeah, I I didn't see him do one. Did uh, did Gerald do something with him? Oh no, that was a XC4 thing. Link to the coffee mug. The coffee mug is handmade from somebody in Calgary, and I don't know. It's like a I got it at a craft fair. Farts Photography says, "Can I borrow the ZV1? I have to send it back. This is just I'm borrowing this from Sony, so." I opened my feed and there were 12 videos on it. I think I think the most that I saw, somebody took a screenshot and there were 15 videos that were all Sony ZV-1s. Like I just scheduled mine, the, the embargo was lifted at, it was like 8 a.m. my time. So I just like scheduled it for 8 a.m. and just let it go live on its own. And I think everybody else had the same idea. So yeah. <laughs> Sunil says, it was handmade in some country, I think. It was handmade four hours from me, three hours from me, so in Canada. But Calgary, which is like three hours south of Edmonton where I live. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you got, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> if you guys have run out of questions, uh, then at that point, I feel like I've run out of answers. So, and uh, the tactical traveler just got here, but uh, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna wrap it up. Unless, uh, unless we got questions, I'm gonna do a little dance and do a little countdown. 
thank you guys so much for uh for coming and uh oh peter actually asked a really good question do you think they'll ever offer digital stabilization software in camera uh in cameras like the a6600 and a7 III? I hope so. In future cameras. I don't think they'll do them in current ones. Anyway, thank you guys so much for coming out. Make sure to give this a big thumbs up if you uh, if you haven't already. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that so you don't miss out on uh, new reviews and tutorials and that kind of stuff. I got new videos coming out every Monday. Uh, make sure to keep your eyes open because there's some real big stuff coming up that you guys are going to like. Thanks for coming to the live stream. We'll see you guys later. Peace.